uh, honored to be here today in the company of men and women who uh, are dedicated to keeping our neighbors and our states and uh, in turn our country um, safe. Uh, knowing you all were in town for a few days makes me feel better. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, We have a great law enforcement community here, the chief and the men and women who work with him. I'm, I'm really proud to have them as uh, uh, friends and neighbors. And uh, for those of you who are visiting from out of state, welcome to Texas. Uh, I know we've got folks from uh, all across the, the country and, and across our northern border. So uh, to uh, uh, those of you from Canada here, uh, we're known for a lot of things, um, from boots to creating jobs, I guess. Mayor is uh, one of the things we're really known for, but our dedication to law and order is, is particularly legendary. Uh, Texans know that keeping the peace is not a job for the faint heart. It's, uh, it's tough work. It takes a special person, somebody who's willing to shoulder the responsibility of protecting their neighbors, their own families. You know, and whether you wear the tan of our state troopers, the dark navy of the Dallas PD, or whether you're in the desert camouflage of our men and women in the military, every uniform signifies the dedication of the individual who's wearing it. Uh, in my view, those people who wear the uniform are a beacon of light in a sometimes dark world. We'll always need officers who will use their intellect, their compassion, and when required, their force to prevent the tyranny of the lawless and to preserve the freedom of the law abiding. So on behalf of 24 million Texans, thank you all for what you do. And uh, whether you're from Memphis, Tennessee, or from Calgary, Alberta, uh, we appreciate your, your work, your dedication. Uh, and the reason's pretty simple, is our world gets kind of smaller. Um, what happens in your corner of the world is impacting our corner of the world. And it does take a cooperative effort to ensure that the bad guys don't get to drop on us. To use a Texas example, we've got a challenging situation along our border with Mexico. Um, you know, it's just a line on a, a map. It's frankly, it's just a river in droughty conditions. Not much of a river. Um, that's what separates us from some of the most vicious drug cartels in the world. What happens along that border affects every one of us. Because without border security, there is no national security. Border security is, of course, a, or supposed to be a federal issue. Uh, but it's also a state and a local issue. When our federal border patrol agents are underfunded, outgunned, it has an impact on all of us. To be clear, we have nothing but respect for those individuals who work in the Border Patrol. They work hard. They put their lives on the line every single day, right alongside our own peace officers. We just feel they are consistently underfunded, shortchanged by our federal government. So over the past several years, we've invested significant resources, state resources, upwards of $110 million in the last two legislative sessions to put more boat boots on the ground along that border. We've dedicated significant state resources to ensuring those local, state, and federal officers have the technology and the support and the training that they need to disrupt those operations that the drug cartels are involved in. Those efforts have caused a 60% drop in crime rates in those targeted areas. We're proud of our successes, but I don't have to tell anyone in this room that challenges along that border are far from finished. Indeed, those cartels have responded in their own way by changing their tactics, probing the border for blind spots, weak points, where they can continue smuggling drugs and humans and other contraband across the border. So to keep ahead of those innovations, on their side, we've introduced a few of our own, including one that we called our Ranger Recon Teams, units composed of the legendary Texas Rangers, Texas military uh, members, DPS, local law enforcement personnel. 
these units have the know-how, the skill, the experience to deal with new hotspots that flare up and support to shut them down. Innovative programs like Ranger Recon are a big part of what we need to effectively combat those who seek to do us harm. The second part of that equation, and I think every bit is important, uh, is the need for ongoing and expanded communication between law enforcement organizations at every level. We do a much better job of sharing information across jurisdictional boundaries because we certainly know our enemies do that. We know the old saying that you can't outrun a radio and our troublemakers along the border and across the state are learning that it's tough to outrun our coordinated law enforcement efforts. Our fusion centers are another good example of, our, the, 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 of how we multiply our efforts, plugging the gaps in our intelligent networks, sharing data more effectively between agencies. It's tougher than ever for a wrongdoer to hide their identities and for that matter their intentions. And we made big progress since 9-1-1. Since 9-11, there have been 72 fusion centers established across the country. We got one right here in Austin. Combs through data on a 24-hour basis, synthesizing, identifying trends that can indicate criminal or terrorist activities, getting the right folks the information that have the need to know. Collaboration, again, is the key. We're currently working on another fine example of that sort of collaboration, uh, the city of Austin's PD. Its regional law enforcement partners are collaborating with the Texas Department of Public Safety to create the Austin Regional Intelligence Center. It'll be called ARIC, and it will become an autonomous regional center co-locating in the same facility as the state of Texas Fusion Center. And I want to commend the chief and his staff for their foresight in developing this very important center. It is a model of state and local cooperation in the interest of enhancing public safety at the state, the local, and the federal level. I, I feel a little bit like I'm preaching to the choir here. Uh, because I know innovation and communication are important parts of wherever your organization calls home. But bringing together the largest departments on the continent by ensuring each of you is well versed on the latest in leadership, law enforcement techniques and legislation, you're helping to take the good work each of you is doing individually and spread it coast to coast. In your conversations, you may discover that an innovative program working in Florida just may happen to work in California. May work even better if it's tweaked by someone who tried it in Georgia. Conversely, sharing your experience with a program that didn't work as planned in your area could save someone planning a similar approach elsewhere a whole lot of trouble and money. It's that collaboration and, and competition, if you will. The states should be laboratories of innovation where we pick and choose and best practices, then use them in our locations. We learn from our successes, and the fact of the matter is we learn from our failures. When those lessons are shared and the principles are carried home, you will make it harder for those who want to commit crime against your citizens. I applaud your efforts. I wish you continued success in keeping our community safe. Again, we welcome you to Texas. Enjoy your stay here, and God bless you.